What is going on guys? Welcome to your 26th HTML5 tutorial and in this lesson I want to talk to you guys about a new type of query selector method and that's query selector all. However, before I continue I want to make sure that you guys understand why this query selector method works because what's going on here is this first paragraph and this third paragraph have the same ID however whenever we click the third one nothing happens we only get an alert box whenever we click the first paragraph and the reason behind that is because this query selector method right here it only can return one single element so even though there are more than one element with the ID of tuna this method is limited to one element only so what if we we're making a program where we actually wanted to return all of the elements with the ID of tuna? Well in that case what we need to do is we would need to make a method called, and let me go ahead and delete all this, query selector all. And what this does is it returns an array or a list of whatever we type inside it. So I'm just going to go ahead and since we already have a couple things with the ID of tuna, I'm just going to go ahead and write it just like this. Now this I know I didn't tell you guys but you can pretty much write any CSS selector in here for example if you wanted to turn all the stuff in the class Bucky if you had like five different things that belong to the class Bucky you would write it like that but since we have a couple things in the ID of tuna I'm just gonna write it just like this so like I said this query selector all method what it does is it basically returns to you a list or an array so we're saying okay call this method and return to us an array but we aren't doing anything with it not yet one thing we can do with it is we can store it in variable and I'm just gonna name my variable list so it's easy to follow along with and now what we can do is this list now contains this method or excuse me this paragraph and this paragraph so then we can index each element in that ar array just by using the index number and remember whenever you're working with an array they always start out at zero so if you have two items in it this would be the zeroth element and this would be the one element so if you write list one it's gonna to refer to that second element in the list so we're gonna write list one equals uh... we'll just write like on click equals talk so whenever we click that second thing in the list is gonna call this thing right here so let's go ahead and save that, refresh, and see what we got. Go ahead and click first, nothing happens, even though it's in the list. Second, nothing happens because it wasn't even in that array. And third, check it out. Yo yo ma, just like that. Now another kind of more useful thing we what we can do is say we wanted to scroll through our, our entire document and we didn't know how many things were in that list, but everything that was in that list we wanted to have that functionality that whenever we clicked it we wanted to pop up an alert box well what we do is we would get rid of this right here because this only references one particular item what we could do is just make a for loop to loop through everything in that list and you do that by writing this for it will make a counter variable i equals zero and then we'll write when i is less than a list remember that list variable is what we declared right up here list length and then we'll just put I plus plus and what this is going to do is whenever we have a list it's going to pretty much cycle through everything in that list and now we can apply that list and instead of putting a numerical value in here to reference a single element we can just write I in there and it's going to reference all of those elements it's going to loop through it on click not on lick that is disgusting on click equals talk now again what it's going to do is say we have five different things in our list the very first time this cycles through it's going to go list zero on click equals talk list one on click equals talk list two three and four on click equals talk so then all of those elements get the functionality that whenever we click them it calls this function right here so we go ahead and save that and refresh whenever we click the second one nothing happens because it isn't in that list the first one check it out and the third one check it out and if we had ten a hundred a million different elements as long as they all belong to that ID of tuna 
it would get this functionality. So I just want to explain to you guys that there is a difference between the query selector method and the query selector alt. The query selector method is only limited to one element, but the query selector all can have unlimited number of elements and you typically use this whenever you want to reference a bunch of stuff on your page all with a similar attribute so now that you understand that we're ready to move on to some more advanced stuff in looking at how all this ties together with HTML5 so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video